Hi there, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1112, Find Volume of Composed Figures, Part 1. We're going to break this lesson up into two parts. Our essential question is how can you find the volume of rectangular prisms that are combined? Please turn in your Go Math book to lesson 1112 and let's begin. Let's take a look at this figure right here. It says the shape at the right is a composite figure. It is made up of two rectangular prisms that are combined. How can you find the volume of the figure? So the strategy that I will be teaching you today is we're going to talk about breaking up this figure into two rectangular prisms and use our dimensions to help us find the two volumes. And then we'll combine them together to find the total volume. So suppose that I want to go ahead and make a line right here to break this up into two different rectangular prisms. Can you see this one right here? And then I broke it up into having one right here. Now that's one way I can do it. Or I can erase that and I can make it go this way. And I could have a rectangular prism going horizontally and then a small one right here that we have shaved some off of the bottom and we just have a smaller rectangular prism. Let's go ahead and do the first one that I showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and make a line going right here. I'm going to break this up into two rectangular prisms. I'm going to label this one A and this one B. Now my goal is to find the two different volumes of the rectangular prisms. So we have to use the dimensions that are given. So let's start with rectangular prism A. Now I know that the formula for volume is length times width times height. <clears throat> so let's take what we know. I see right here that I have a length of two inches on this rectangular prism. So if it's two inches right here, I do know that it's also two inches right here. So I'm going to go ahead and call my first length to be two inches. Now my width is going to be, you have to look all around. Can you see that the width is going to be the back side of this rectangular prism? I know you can't see it, but a helper is going to be this four over here. Imagine if we took this four and we stuck it on the other side, that would actually be the width of this particular rectangular prism. So I would have a width of four inches. You just have to visualize that hidden on the other side of this vertical rectangular prism. So I'm going to go ahead and put a four as my width. And you can see that the height is in fact six inches high. And now I can just go ahead and solve. I'm going to do my length times my width to find my base, and that would be eight inches times six inches would give me a volume of 48 cubic inches. Now this is for rectangular prism A. Now let's focus on rectangular prism B. Now for rectangular prism B, I do know that my formula is length times width times height. But you have to remember, my length is going to be a little bit different than what you see here because I've already chopped off this portion because we've already used it for this volume on this first rectangular prism A. So I have to know that I took off 2 inches, so we know that the length right here would be 10, but we've already taken away 2 and used it on rectangular prism A. So I know what's left over right here for B would be 8 inches. I'm going to go ahead and stick that on this other side so you can see that the length would be 8 inches. So I'll put 8 for my length. My width is still going to be 4 right here. So it'll be 4 for my width. And for the height for this second rectangular prism, if you look right here, I have a height of 2 inches. Because remember, we're looking at this one that's laying horizontally. So I have 8 times 4 times 2. And let's go ahead and do our length times width to get our base. And that would be 32 times 2. And I know 32 times 2 is, in fact, 64 inches or cubic inches. Now, our last step is going to be to combine our two volumes to show the full volume. So I would have 48 inches cubed plus 64 cubic inches. And when you add that up, you would have 112 cubic inches. So that's the strategy that we'll be using today to solve a couple problems. Let's go ahead and begin in our book. Let's go ahead and begin with question one. Now I see right here that I can probably divide this up into two rectangular prisms like that. 
That's one way. Now, the other way would have to be making it three rectangular prisms. And you would find A here, and then because these two are congruent, you'd actually just find one of the B's, and then you just double it. But I want to go ahead and just find two separate rectangular prisms. So let's go ahead, and let's go ahead and just divide it into two rectangular prisms, like this. All right, so we're going to go ahead and find rectangular prism A, and then we'll find rectangular prism B together. Now again, rem remember our formula is length times width times height, or find your base, which is your length times width, and multiply it by your height. Now looking at the first bottom letter A, rectangular prism, I can see my dimensions. I can see that I have my length is 4, the width is 2, and the height is 1. So this one should not be hard at all. In fact, I bet you you can solve this one before I do. I can see that we have 4 times 2 times 1. And my base, of course, is going to be 8, and my height is 1. So all together, we would have 8 cubic inches for rectangular prism A. So I'm going to go ahead and put 8 cubic inches right inside here. Now let's focus on B. Now let's see what we know so far. I can see that the width is 1 inch. Can you see right there? I have a width of 1 inch. Can I see my height? Over here is my helper. I can see from the top all the way to the bottom is going to be 3 inches. However, I can see that 1 inch is already shaved off because we've taken away this portion right here. Can you see that right here in this 1? So I've already taken away 1 inch, so we have to see what's left over because we've already cut off this bottom portion. So I'm going to change my height to 2 inches for my rectangular prism B because we've already used up 1 of the inches right here. Okay, and we've, we've chopped it off. So now I can see that my width is 1 inch, my height is 2 inches. What would be my length? It would be this line right here. And I can see right here that this would be a congruent line. Do you see how I can just transfer this 2 inches r directly right up here to match up with that one? So I can see that this would be a 2 inch width. So let's go ahead and fill in our dimensions for length times width times height for our rectangular prism B. Now we have found right here that our length will be 1 inch. Do you see right there? It's 1 inch, so I'm going to put a 1 right below it. My width we found to be 2 inches. Do you see how wide it is right here? 2 inches, so I'll put a 2 right here. And the height, remember it used to be 3 from top to bottom, but we shaved off 1 inch already for this bottom rectangular prism, so our height is 2 inches. So I would put 2 right there. So our base for this rectangular prism is going to be 2 inches by 2 inches of height would give me a total of 4 cubic inches. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 4 cubic inches inside this rectangular prism. So now my last step is going to be to add my two partial rectangular prism volumes. I have 8 cubic inches and 4 cubic inches. So 8 plus 4 we know is 12 cubic inches. And that's how you can find the volume for this rectangular prism. Alright, let's move on to number 4. For number 4, I can see two rectangular prisms right away. I'm going to go ahead and make a line right here. Will you take your pencil in your book and make a line right there as well? And we're going to find the volume of rectangular prism A, and then we'll find the volume of rectangular prism B. Now, I bet you you can see your length times width time height for rectangular prism A. I can see right now that I have a length of 12 feet for rectangular prism A. My width is 6 feet, and the height is 4 feet. So, so let's go ahead and write those dimensions down in your book. Length times width times height. And this is for rectangular prism A. Now I see my length is 12 feet. My width is 6 feet. And the height is 4 feet. All right, let's go ahead and find our base, which will be our length times our width. And that's 12 times 6. Now, if you don't know your facts of 12 times 6 right away in your head, you can just go off to the side and work it out. 12 times 6 is going to be 72. 
So now we have a base of 72 feet, and we're going to multiply it by the height, 4 feet. So my equation is 72 times 4. And this is to find the volume of rectangular prism A. Now, for rectangular prism A, I was able to come up with 288 cubic feet. I'm going to write it right here in the middle, so that way you can see what we have. And go ahead and write that on yours as well. Now, do you see how I did that again? I'm going to quickly show you again. I did my length times the width and got 72 feet. And then we're going to multiply it by the height, which is 4 feet, to give us 72 times 4, which will give us 288 cubic feet, <clears throat> because we went ahead and multiplied it by height to give it that third dimension. Now let's go ahead and look at rectangular prism B. Now here's what I know. I know that my length is 8 feet, the width is 4 feet, but where's the height? Do you see it right here? We're going to have to look all around and see if we can find it. I can see that the height here matches, if you come across, it matches this height right here. So, so I could go ahead and plug in 4 feet to be my height for rectangular prism B as well. So let's go ahead and plug in our dimensions, length times width times height. Remember to find our base, it's going to be length times width. 8 times 4, I know to be 32 feet. And now we're going to multiply it by our height, 32 times 4. So 32 times 4, if I work that out, I get 128 feet. Actually, it would be cubic feet because we're finding the volume. 128 cubic feet. All right, so our now final step will be to add our two partial volumes total. I have 288 feet plus 128 feet should give us our entire volume. And now you just have to do the work and add it up, and we should have 416 cubic feet. All right, so that's how you find this volume. I hope this is starting to make a lot of sense for you. Really, our whole goal is to find the volume of rectangular prism A and B, and then add the two combined volumes. All right, let's look at number five. This is our real world problem solving question. It says, as part of her shop class, Jules made the figure below out of a piece of wood. How much space does a figure she made take up? So our goal is to find our two partial volumes of this complex rectangular prism design. And we're gonna go ahead and make two different rectangular prisms to do so. I'm gonna choose to divide it up this way. Do you see where I'm doing that? So I have a rectangular prism A and I have a rectangular prism B. Now if you want to do this separately and do the alternate way where you would have your rectangular prisms going this way, you can do that and see if your answer matches mine. However, if you want to work along with me, we're going to go ahead and find these two different rectangular prism volumes. All right, let's start with A. Remember, we want to write down our formula is length times width times height. Now let's go ahead and find our length and our width and our height. I can see right here my length will be 9 centimeters for rectangular prism A. So go ahead and write 9 underneath your length. My width is how wide it is. It looks like it's 24 centimeters. And my height, as you can see, will be 6 centimeters. So step one is let's go ahead and find our length and our width, which would be our base, and we'll find 9 times 24. So up here I'm going to go ahead and do 9 times 24. 9 times 4 ones is 36 ones, and 9 times 2 tens is 18 tens, plus 3 more will be 21 tens. So we have 216 for my base. But now we have to multiply that by 6 for my height to find the volume of rectangular prism A. So let's find another place right here to write 216 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 110 is 6 tens plus 3 more is 9 tens. And 6 times 2 one hundredths, it would be 12 hundredths. So my volume for rectangular prism A is 1,296 cubic centimeters. 
Now, let's go ahead and focus on rectangular prism B. For rectangular prism B, I know my formula is length times width times height, and I can start plugging in my dimensions. I can see that my length is 30 centimeters, so let's go ahead and write 30 right below the length. Now let's find our width. I see that my width is 9 centimeters, so let's go ahead and write 9 underneath my width. And now let's find the height. Now remember, my height isn't showing here, but I have a helper somewhere in this complex figure. Do you see that we have a height over on this rectangular prism A that shows 6 centimeters? Therefore, I can write 6 centimeters right there to show that my height of rectangular prism B is in fact 6 centimeters. So we'll have times 6 for my height. Let's go ahead and solve for the base, which is my length times my width. And I can see that it's 30 times 9, which would be 270. And now let's bring down our height, which is 6. 270 times 6, if you work that out with me, you could see 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 7 tenths is 42 tenths. We're going to regroup to 4 hundredths and drop our 2 tenths. And then 6 times 2 hundredths is 12 hundredths, plus 4 more would be 16 hundredths. So, my volume of my rectangular prism B is 1,620 cubic centimeters. So, step three is just adding A and B's volume together. So, I'm going to go ahead and take a different color so you can see that we're adding up our new volume, 1,620 cubic centimeters for rectangular prism B and 1,296 cubic centimeters for rectangular prism A. When we add those up, you should have 2,916 cubic centimeters. Now, as you can see, this was a pretty big process because we have to, first of all, break it up into two different rectangular prisms. Then you have to do length times width times height to find your volume for each of your rectangular prisms. And then step three is to combine the two together. So this is very important that you do take your time and slow down to show your work to make sure you don't make any careless errors. Now for your homework for tonight, I want you to do only question two on the back side, and here is the example. And then I want you to only do questions four through six. Okay, you can go ahead and skip number three for tonight. Just do questions two, and then four, five, and six. Go ahead and rate yourself on how you feel about this topic so far. Level one, a novice. Two, apprentice. Three, practitioner. Four, expert. Just write your rating on the top of your page. Okay, again, here are your homework questions. Number two, skip over three and do four, five, and six. And we'll check those tomorrow as well as practice other types of questions on how to find the volume of complex figures. Have a great night.